Tuesday, December 5th. Can we have roll call, please? Chair Lowe? Absent. Vice Chair Quilty? Here. Commissioner Andre? Here. Commissioner DeBolt? Here. Commissioner Gross? Here. Commissioner Zolfokanik? Here. And Commissioner Zelmer? Absent. Can it stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time, if there's anybody in the audience who'd like to come up and address the commission on a subject matter that is not on the agenda, you can step forward. Seeing nobody in our packed audience, we'll move on to the consent calendar. Um, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting on October 25th. Does anybody have any comments? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. I wasn't here. Okay, we'll open the public hearing for the site development permit. Um, three-story, four-unit, multifamily residential project. Can we have a staff report? I have a conflict. Oh. Oh, hmm. oh I was wondering why you brought the puzzle book. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky her. Uh, Vice Chair Quilty and members of the Planning Commission, um, Site Development Permit 2301 is a consideration of an application to construct a 3,435 square foot, three-story, four-unit building on a vacant parcel at 10912 Walnut Street. <coughs> and the applicant is here with us tonight. You can ask him questions. This is Siraj Ab Ab Abelhosen, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> And he has submitted an application proposing to construct a, uh, a building uh, that is located on the mid, mid block on the east side of Walnut Street between Florista and Catella Avenue. The units in the main building will be two bedroom, two bath uh, units if, uh, if approved. Vehicle access is gained from the east side of the property in the alley. And for project build out, there are 12 spaces required for the, for the four units, and he is providing 12 spaces uh, for that, uh, meeting the city's requirement. The architecture is demonstrated in the elevations. Um, it's uh, pretty basic at this point. I, w I would discuss, uh, describe it as uh, just modern, you know. Uh, it's white stucco with brown gray roof tile the windows have surrounds that define them a bit and there will be a stacked stone base veneer around the bottom of the building the architectural i mean excuse me the staff believes that the three-story overhang cantilever that you'll notice uh, is on the back of the building which is the east side uh, that hangs out on the third story uh, we believe that that does not uh, work and needs to be removed and placed elsewhere on the project. And I've had a conversation with the uh, applicant about it and uh, there are possibilities of where he could uh, uh, put that um, extra space and still make this work. Um, so in the resolution of approval, uh, we have written that uh, that will be taken care of uh, by staff with the client um, if you would like to do I mean if you approve uh, let's see the uh, <coughs> they all need to, all of the units need to be uh, over 800 square feet you'll notice that the, uh, with if over he takes what? off the overhang over 800 square feet and it, you'll notice that uh, in order to take off that overhang he will go under the the 800 square feet so he needs to find somewhere else so uh, and staff recommends 
planning commission approval of the ac uh, applicant's project with the conditions listed in the resolution. Um, <coughs> th there are still opportunities possibly to make changes to it, so um, those would be taken care of with staff, um, especially that overhang. And uh, it, apply it complies with the multifamily residential development standards. Um, and uh, that concludes my report. Okay, does anybody have any questions for staff? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, regarding the, what you refer to as the, the overhang, mm -hmm. okay, that's, that's an encroachment into the right. rear setback. The rear 10 even, foot setback, yes. Even though it is on the higher the level of the right. grade. So that is definitely is an encroachment. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> and by, uh, okay, so that's that question. And <coughs> it says, it, it's, it, it says on the cover page that, that the un unit number three is uh, 800 square feet. You list, uh, you list all, the, all the square footages. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> the, I went ahead and did the math on the square footages off the plans, okay? Three of the four are correct. I mean, within a hair's breadth of being correct. However, unit number three, uh, with the encroachment, if you counted the encroachment, is only seven, is like 700 and, was 783 square feet, not 800, as represented on the plans, okay? When you take away the encroachment, the square footage of the unit is 723 square feet by my calculation, okay? And I've double checked it and I, I, I feel that I'm, I'm right on that. Um, <coughs> and then, uh, I guess that's my, I have, I have other concerns regarding the, the site plan. I mean, you know, this, this, this is the plan that, you know, it, it has to be accurate. I mean, this is, mm -hmm. and, uh, and. And by the way, the applicant uh, says he's brought some extra pages that he wanted to show you tonight, so, but we, we'll do that later. Whatever, okay, so I guess uh, for me, I have to get past I don't know how we get past 723 square feet, you know, uh, when we're supposed to have 800, and it's represented to be 800, okay. Um, so that's, that's, to me, that's the, that's the fatal flaw, you know, here, as far, you know, with, with respect to the, to the unit. Okay. There's other issues, I but I, I don't know how we get past that and approve approve something if that is just you know you've got one unit that doesn't meet the standards. So we have basically probably a three unit building. I mean probably should be a three unit building, but we're trying to squeeze four in there. And uh, so anyway, uh, that's my question was mainly to get that clarified. You. He's aware of that, evidently. Yes, I've, I've told him about it, and uh, I've given him some ideas, and uh, we'll see what he, he may have dealt with this on those new plans, I don't know, but Whatever. we'll see. Um, yeah. All right, so that's where I'm at at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, some I have some comments to, um, maybe I should withhold them until after the applicant speaks, but I'll put them out there now so he can address them and just sorry, but I don't know why this is here in front of us. Um, He's got issues with the cantilever, and you've stated in your report that he's going to work it out with staff. But that's not a ministerial uh, issue. It should be here before us. So I don't think this is ripe. I think that that should be addressed before it's even brought to us. Uh, there's, it, there's conditions regarding the landscape uh, plan. that It's not here yet. We can't look at it. It's allegedly going to be done. 
with some date in the future. Um, oh, actually, it, it is in there. So, I see. Yeah, uh, um, page LP. Okay, I'm looking at conditions 22 and yeah. 23. Yeah, th those we always have in there. They have to submit a, a this is a preliminary plan. They have to uh, bring us their final plans before Why don't building we get permit. To see those final plans? Uh, because we have to pay our landscape architect to design them with their landscape architect, and it's it kind of expensive. And so uh, they show us a preliminary just kind of idea of what they want to see. Okay. This is what it is. Yeah, this this will not be what it looks like once they've gone through the landscape because it has to be the uh, water efficient landscape ordinance. It has to meet that, okay. and so. Well, I just yeah, I saw those, yeah. saw that, but in here I'm looking at yeah. 22 and 23. I'm also looking at condition yeah. 34. It talks about the uh, utility equipment and so forth, and that's also going to be de done with the development services director. That, that should be in front of us, should not not. And also condition 37. Um, it says uh, this goes to the cantilever issue that we spoke about. I think I think all these things should be. This is almost like an incomplete, incomplete report, in my opinion. Um, I don't think it's right to be here. I'm also looking at 21. That's part of the landscape thing, too. And also, I noticed in the in the rear dedication, the two and a half feet in the alley, you've got a, <coughs> got a fence in the alley, it appears. Am I, am I incorrect on that? No, you're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's part. That's what's part of some of the stuff. That <laughs> there's other things. That's one of yeah, the the uh, fence and the gate in the alley. You uh, can't have a fence in the alley. Please. And uh, yeah. And the measurements are running are running on the plans. They run to the. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, it was a, a measurement of tw twelve feet eight inches from this from the rear of the building to the supposed property line, well, that's to the out, that's before the dedication. Once you make the de dedication, then you gotta take two and a half feet off of that. And so that distance really is 10 feet, two inches, all right? And the, uh, I'm doing this from memory now. Then there was a, well, this had to do with the overhang they, the, or the encroachment, there's a, there's a 10 foot measurement that, so it, so it looks like it purports to fall within the 10 foot setback. But that line goes again to the outer edge of the dedication. So you have to take two and a half feet off that 10 feet. That encroachment, you know, that distance is only seven and a half feet. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 Measurements on the plans don't comport with what is actually there. Uh, again, from memory, without, uh, I, mean, I took a hard look at this stuff, a real hard look. The, the length of the building was like 86 feet, six inches on the site plan that we're approving. But, if you add up the measurements from the, when you go to the build, the actual, where it shows the units and it's got the measurements for each component of the units, you add it up and you, you end up with 86 feet, eight inches. It's only two inches, but I mean, but, and this is in other areas too. The sum of the parts don't equal the, the hole on the uh, on the garage in the front, the one that's the single level. It says it's 36 feet one inches. That name that number just rung out. But in actuality, when you measure the components of, that makes up that distance, it's 36 feet two inches. Now, I mean, I I, I don't want to sound too picky unish about it, but this is a site plan that, in my opinion, has to be accurate. And uh, this is what I found in, in you know, it, the, the numbers just don't, 
don't jive. And uh, and it it needs to be. I mean, that's the, to me that's ancillary. It's important, but ancillary to the this uh, shortage of 70, 77 square feet for the one unit. To me, that's that's the fatal flaw, and uh, I'm not comfortable in conditioning that. That we approve this on condition that he can find another 77 feet, and and deal with staff on that. I, I think that kind of what uh, Commissioner Self Mechanic was saying. This is something that we I want to see it. I mean, I want to see how you find set. 77 feet. If you if you encroach <coughs> about two and a half to three feet in the backside, trying to make trying to make it up, he still didn't make it. Right. According to my math, I mean, now I, I I I'm you know I know how to use a ruler, and I mean I added added it up and uh, going off of the numbers that are there. But then again, the numbers aren't precise. I mean, and an inch or two inches. Over 20 feet, when you do it square footage wise, I mean, I, it's like I think three inches over ten, three inches over 20 feet is like six square feet. So you're either hurting yourself or helping yourself, but we don't know because I'm not going to sit here and, and piece out every every you know I don't have that much time. I mean, uh, but from what I, I I hit what I thought was the the important stuff, and yet there's still other stuff that's not right and. Uh, including the the, uh, the fence and the gate and the I, I would like to see a clean mm -hmm. you know a, a, a clean project that meets the code the codes the code the codes 800 feet square feet I want to see one that meets 800 I mean it says it in the legend in the front but that doesn't comport with the with the calculations in the you know in the in the in the drawings that's my that's where I'm at. I mean, at this point, I would be, you know, I would say deny the project, okay? Mm -hmm. Just, especially if he knew it ahead of time coming in here. Mm -hmm. You know, why are we, you know, it's almost like, yeah, why are we here? Mm -hmm. You know, so that, that's my thought. I mean, I don't want to crowd. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, and again, I'm just bringing these up so when the, the con uh, applicant comes up, we can address them. Uh, I saw here in the report that, uh, because it's uh, less than five units, uh, there's no dumpster right. required. So he's going to have trash cans. So there's going to be at least two, maybe three for each unit. But wh where are they going to put them on here? Um, maybe he can answer that. I don't see a place. Plus our new green waste that's coming. Or is that's that what it's up. called, green waste? Yeah. 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 Uh, so that's that. Food waste, food yeah. scrap, food 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 scrap. And then also, I don't see a, a walkway from the sidewalk to the the inhabitable dwellings. I don't know where that is. Maybe I don't see it. Maybe from the street to the to the just the driveway. I don't know. Well, driveway. It's just in the driveway. It's just the driveway here, right? Just in the driveway. Oh, yeah. the street. So yeah. anyhow, maybe he can he can answer that one. There should be one up front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's those are my those are my thoughts. All right. Okay. If there's nothing else, we'll open up the public hearing. Let the applicant come up and speak. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Good. Good evening. Now I saw Wendy handing some stuff over, so I felt jealous. It's my turn to hand some things over. I have some renderings for you this evening. Sir. Yes, please, sir. And I printed them last minute. My printer was running low on ink and I was running low on time, but the first page shows you roughly, you don't have this page, I'd like to present it to you. I tried to print seven copies for everybody. So this shows the view from Walnut Street. I was unable to print this page for you unfortunately because I was running out of ink and running out of time. This right here shows you the um, stone veneer that we're planning to put on there. 
and shows you the uh, selection for the stucco that we're planning to have. A little bit of uh, trim around the windows and shows a little bit of the background built. Now, I first uh, would like to introduce myself briefly to you. My name is Suraj Abdelhussain. I graduated from Cal State Long Beach as a civil engineer in 2015. I worked with uh, several general contractors in very high profile projects. First one of them is um, uh, Huntington Beach Senior Center. The second one, it is Pacific City and the city of Huntington mm -hmm. Beach as well. I worked on Lot 579 with general contractor PMC at the time. And afterwards, I moved to work with Clark Construction and uh, Long Beach Civic Center project and the port building. And I worked on that project for three years. That project was around $300 million in overall budget. Um, my specific scopes was mainly facade. I worked on the uh, curtain walls, and uh, I want to tell you a little fact about it that is fun. The architect selected the uh, slats that go inside the curtain walls for the port headquarters to have colors similar to the containers, because when you are around the port, all you see is containers, <coughs> so they selected the same specific colors. Hmm. Now I want to dive a little bit more and give you about my recent project. I have delivered a project in the city of Fairmont on Somerset and Downey. And that project had been showcased several times in the city. It had very similar outside, like this building that I'm presenting to you. I failed to show exactly what we're planning to do here, but I provided Tom Oliver with a couple of samples. The roof tile have multicolor um, concrete tile, and I showed to him as well a um, sample for the stucco. And actually, the stone veneer, it's not just this color. It has a little bit more life into it. Now I want to dive a little bit more into this specific of this project and to address um, all your concerns. I would like to start by addressing the square footage. This is all I stand behind this calculations. And if you like, I can break it down for you and then add them up and multiply them and provide you with calculations to make sure we are meeting the minimum requirement, which is 800 square foot for each unit. This is a red line that we will not try to maneuver around it or play with the calculations or the dimensions. If this is the case here, I would gladly revise all the plans with my architect that unfortunately is traveling tomorrow. He couldn't be with us this evening. And I have very high respect for the city of Los Alamitos. I have relatives that live here, the owner himself, the developer, he lives in the city of Los Alamitos. And I know how precise you are and how would you like the buildings to be done on a very high portfolio and very high um, outcome. So we're going to dive into the dimensions at a later time. I didn't bring my calculator with me, but I would love to send you an email if you like later this evening or at a later time. I know you s met specially for us tonight, and I really appreciate you taking the time to make this meeting happen. Uh, I would like to thank you for that on a side note. And um, yeah. I would like to talk about the location for the garbage that you mentioned and um, we can allocate some space for it. On, uh, on the left of the uh, front of the building, I can show you here, there's a little walkway that's made out of three feet and 11 inches. We can pour some concrete to make some site um, space for the trash can. I know this is a very viable concern that you're bringing up, but we can revise the plans to reflect the location of these uh, trash cans <coughs> over here. and. Um, for the setback, I know Mr. Tom Oliver have helped us tremendously with this project, and uh, he suggested that we realize above the stairs, the space, <coughs> we have some area over there that we can carve out and then include it in one of the units. Now, if you look at the sum of the units, um, you'll find out that if you add them both up, they come relatively close to the first number that you have provided, which is 768, if I'm not mistaken, or 770 give or take. Now what we can do to resolve this issue, I would suggest that we can extend the overhang that is on the driveway side to a little bit more than four feet. But now when you do this, it becomes structurally um, costly because now you have a lot of moment and then now you have to have a lot of more beams and a lot of more um, structural members to carry this way. This is why sometimes we deviate of extending the overhang past four feet. But I do see a couple of options that we can entertain with you 
to make the minimum requirement, which is 800 square foot for each unit possible and viable. And we would not <coughs> have to mess with this 1%. This is a very sensitive topic. We have revised the plan several times and we've prepared over three renderings and we failed sometimes to feel the deadline. This is why you don't see everything 100% drafted on this set of plans, but we're still working with Mr. Oliver on meeting all the requirements. If you can be so kind and give us some kind of approval for the meantime, I know your sense is about this and we can submit another set of plans for Mr. Oliver and for all the members to see and to study closely with all the calculations that you need, everything else that you need. But we've been in this process for the past at least five to six months and the developer is getting really anxious about the route back and forth that we're going with, with revising the plans and so is the architect. But we mean all good intentions. We are here, we're willing to work together to reflect the plans as you wish to meet all the specifications that you have here in the city. We don't mean to deviate 1% away from it. And we have all the good intentions to come in front of you and um, work this out. If you have any more questions you want me to clarify, I'm willing to do it. If you want me to sit down and do the calculations, I'm definitely willing to do it. I'm not questioning your calculations 1%, but most of these have been drafted by AutoCAD. I trust you and if anything is wrong I definitely hold the responsibility for it and I'm willing to revise the plans as early as tomorrow I have the CAD drones at home I can work with them and make sure we meet the minimum requirements which is 800 square foot for the city for a two bedroom and two bath and again we can entertain other options that Mr. Tom Oliver gave us that can intrude a little bit to the uh, 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 staircase and utilize that space because you have the minimum head requirement and you know as you're coming up we can use that space for a living space to increase it to go over 800. He have mentioned it because you have probably seen it in previous projects that it was done and we definitely believe this is a very good option that we can look into. Now would you like to ask me any questions in particular I can refer to each question one by one but I wasn't able to capture everything at the first time. I'm all here, I'm ready, I'm, I'm yours, I can assist you, help with the numbers, anything I can do to make. Victor, you want me to go first? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no? Okay. Uh, Art, do you want to ask any questions? I guess if you knew that you were below the 800 square feet prior to this meeting, Prior to doing your drafting, why didn't why di why didn't it do it then? Why are we here now? I I guess that's that's probably my main question. I I you know math is math. I, I it, it, it's agree. it's uh, I I I can sympathize with you in a way, but at the at the same. Uh, I, knew I, I, I have I have I have a set of plans here that show that there's a there's a three of the three of the four units are correct. One of them is spot on. I got right to the same 818 square feet. I'm off a little on the other ones, but I figure it's off because you say that you have 60 square 60 square foot 60 you have patios that are 60 square feet. Okay. And unfortunately, they're not, s again, it gets into the, see, we're, da we're, we're getting down into the inches here. This is how tight this is. You know, you're, you're not 60 square feet. You're less than that. You're 59 feet and maybe, I don't know, uh, three or four inches, five inches. Okay, so, so that all plays in, and all these numbers at some point, in my opinion, they catch up. And when they catch up, it either, like I said, it benefits you or it can hurt you. That's why everything has to be accurate. And, and I don't see it as accurate. Uh, and uh, the math on the square footage for the unit, 
and I have it down to the, I, I have, I, I, I took your feet and inches, reduced them all to inches, and then did the area and divided it by 144 square inches in a square foot and came down with the precise number. And I did all of this by hand and I checked it twice and then this morning I said, I wonder if there's something on the, that I can go to a website. I went, I look <laughs> on my phone, here it is. I've got it right now. We could do this right now. And, we could, and I checked all, all on that. You put in your feet and your inches on your length and your width and it gives you the total square footage right down into the decimal. And I mean, I could have done this thing in 10 minutes. Instead I took, you know, but whatever. The, the bottom line is, your, you know, your 70, 77 feet off on one unit, okay? How you get there, I really don't care. There's not, uh, if you can get there. I, it would seem to me if you could have gotten there, you'd have, you'd have already been there. But uh, for me, uh, that's, that's the major issue in addition to the sum of all the parts not adding up to the whole, and that's replete throughout these set of plans. I don't know who drew them up, I don't know who did it, but you know, when you, if you start off with a, a line that's 85 feet, and then, you're, then you cut that 85 feet all up, and you, and you put the numbers in, the distance, and I start adding those all up within that, and I come up with a greater number than what's out there, What's that all about? Especially if you're doing it on a computer, you're doing a, uh, it would just seem to me that you, you, that would catch your work. I mean, I could see somebody making a mistake, but there's so much here that is, uh, in my opinion, that is uh, uh, inaccurate that I, I'm inclined to deny the project simply because I, 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 it's taken five months, how can we get here and still be short? I, I, don't, I don't understand that. And um, uh, I mean, we, do, we, we don't see a lot of projects, but we do see the projects and we go through this and we make sure they add up and, and you know, so we get, you know, can't, and it, sometimes it's not even square footage. Sometimes if you're doing in a larger unit, you have to allow space for trash enclosures and stuff like that. And by the time you put that in, you lose the parking spot. And somebody wants to do a, you know, a, whatever, a five unit building or a six unit building. And we can't do it because you can't put the trash enclosure, you fit it in and that takes up the space and you gotta roll it back to a, a smaller number of units. I suspect that's probably what's here, but I, all we have is what we have before us. We don't, we don't have whatever you might want to do. We have what we have. And it's been submitted to us. Uh, I mean, I, at, at this point, I mean, I would make a motion to, re to deny the project. And I will make that motion if there, you know, if we can get a second for discussion, then I, 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 I make that motion for denial. Uh, that's my thought, and uh, but I don't I don't know what else I, I, I cannot see approving this in, in in any way shape or form. I mean, just uh, we can't and and not and not put the burden on the staff to have to find a way to come up with another seventy three feet. I, whatever happens has to come back to us and and to make sure that it's agreed. So. I do have one question for you. From Walnut, it doesn't look like there's access to the property. Now, can I please address Mr. Arthur? Oh, sure. Allow me. Um, I want to thank you for taking the time to study this closely. And I can certainly assure you that I was not aware of what you're mentioning, that there are dimensions that are not adding up to the total square footage. Otherwise, I would not be embarrassing myself and standing in front of you trying to bypass something that is not 100% accurate. Now that you mentioned it, I will not sleep this evening until I figure out exactly these numbers because there is a lot of my professional career 
even though I have not prepared these plans, I'm just presenting them from owner perspective. The architect present, prepared these plans. But I have worked with him before and this issue have never happened. I would want to get to the bottom of this. If this is the main concern for you, I can assure you that we will not try to mess with the system 1% or reflect inappropriate data for you and waste your time. The owner have been extremely anxious. He have cleared that lot several times. He have got some tickets because the weed have grown in it and then we had to come by and then clean it. He's very anxious to get this project going. He got his contractor as well involved and he provided the WMQP report for Mr. Tom Oliver to show um, the requirements that we need. Now for the access on Walnut, we can definitely um, work out something. We can provide a walkway with beautiful gate, something to look statically pleasing. And then also for the fence that is on the property line, we can do something very nice out of stucco with a clean finish. Again, we have provided previous projects that were very satisfying for the city of Paramount. And Mr. John King, he's on the planning commission. He have gone there seven times. He took pictures of the project that have very, very similar exterior. This is the only reason I bring it up. And he is pleased about the project. And even um, Johnny, who is the head of the building and safety, have also worked with us on that project. And he's very pleased with the outcome. And I'm sure if we were to move forward with this project, you're gonna drive beside it and you're gonna point out to it and say, I approve this, this looks incredibly amazing. It's gonna bring a sense of pride to you and it's gonna be something very presentable for such a city as Los Alamitos. And again, we can play with the structural members. We can go past the four feet overhang that you see right now over the garages to make up for the loss of space. But this will get costly on the owner from structural perspective. And because the overhang exceeds four <coughs> feet, now you have to add deeper beams and then have to do maybe some tangan groove, smaller space. This is the reason why we didn't go to that space in particular. But if you look at the site plan, it's a free above the garage. We can intrude to that space without affecting any setbacks for square footage requirements. And by the area that I mean, it's right over here. This is a four feet right here over the garage. We can make it up to five feet if needed. Mr. Tom Oliver can correct me. There is nothing wrong with this and it doesn't affect any property line on setbacks. The closer setback we have here is basically for backup space as far as I'm concerned and for the fire department just on the first floor. So the second and third floor should not be affected if we have to shift this four feet and move it a little bit towards the driveway. If that brings a little bit of confidence that we will be able to resolve the project, I wish that you consider this point very closely because this is one aspect that we can do. And then with multiple other options that we can bring up in front of you and in front of Mr. Oliver to make sure that we meet the minimum requirements. We are not trying to cheat the system by any means. We want Are this there any other questions forward. for the applicant or should we close the public uh, hearing? Yeah. Oh, you do? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, question for Tom, a uh, comment and a question for Jen. Uh, Tom, two questions. Tom, on, on, on site plan, between the buildings, there's a broken line rectangle with a broken line triangle in it. What is that? Is that a parking space, car? yeah. 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 Okay, so if there's a car there, how are you going to back out of the garage, that proposed garage? And oh, that's even there's not a car there, all the other backup spaces have 20 feet, and this was, is a 10 feet spot. Is, are they going to be able to exit that garage? Yes, they will. Um, even the, if there's a car it's there? It's actually, you're. This, this part right here on the left side, that's right. actually a storage room. That's not a garage. No, no, I'm talking right. about the garage to the right. To the right, if you're, if you're you'll notice garage, that it's that the uh, car goes past the edge of the garage. There's two There's two, There's two. There's two cars in there, right? Inside, yes, yeah. of that. So the, 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 yeah. the car to the right has clear access. Yes. The car to the left 
It doesn't. I mean, it's it's that that corner of that building is there. Well, I think that's the overhang from that's, the that's second, the floor. second right. floor. This overhang. is the corner of the building. Got yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It is the, the overhang, overhang. Okay. right? Mr. Victor, I believe it is eight foot by eighteen foot. The minimum requirement for one parking spot. Uh, nine by 19 for nine the outside, okay. and then uh, indoor it's so 10 So we are by within 20. the parameters, I believe, yeah. in here. Yeah. Okay. So those are my two questions for staff. And then my question for Chair, um, is there a motion pending? If, if I could, we do need to close the public hearing if we're Before moving to just deliberation of okay. the commission. <coughs> All right, okay. Are you done with your good question? I am. Okay, thank you. At this point, we're gonna close Oh, you have another no, question? No, 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 I'm done. Okay, we're going to close the public hearing and bring it back. Yeah, for just a question. Um, yeah, close the public hearing. I did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. With respect to the, the you know, two-car garage, all right, the, the opening, mm -hmm. okay, what's the minimum width that that opening can be to fit? You, uh, how wide is the opening yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah you, well, usually it's, I, I, I forgot to look that up, but it's something like 17 feet wide, and then there's strong walls on either side of it, which are uh, usually a foot and a half to two feet wide on either side. They're made out of steel, right? and they hold up the, the sides, so they, they block a little bit of, of that 10 by 20 space yes. when you're pulling out. But a car is usually thinner than 10 by right. 20, so it goes half. These are 16. Yeah, yeah, I think. The I one, think the one, the, the one, standard one. Well, at 16. least the one. The, the opening, 16, 16 foot opening, you mean? Is that, is that yeah, so that's standard. two feet on either, yes. No, the, the actual. Where no, the I mean, that if you, if you, uh, that, that makes it where there's two feet strong wall on one side, two feet strong wall on the other side of the door. And then 16. Okay, and fine. 16 right. That's good. Middle, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's good. The most of the garage doors are standard 16. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. That was my. Uh, but but even still, I mean, when you. I mean, like, if I had to park there, there's I would not want to try to get out of that. Yeah. Um, in that corner there. Well, um, getting out of the guest space is going to be what, tough. That's what I'm talking that's about. <laughs> did, did, did this person here in the, um, no, I'm pointing at it. This person here uh, is really, his only option is to just drive back all the way out. Yeah. I mean, there, there's really no other way. If, if there's, especially if there's a car there, he cannot, he, he would have, he could do, but even if he pulled in there, his only option really is still to turn him back out. It, it's not gonna help him unless he backs in and then, you know, it, it's, the, it's, it's complicated, that one. Mm -hmm. It would really the same with, uh, with anybody in these garages. They just have to know that they're gonna have to back out yeah. or back in. And, and to, a to answer the question about a motion, my, my primary concern is the 723 square feet or the less than 800 square feet that's here that, that we have in front of us, plus, plus the other inaccuracies. And, and yes, my motion was to deny the project. I, I just wanted to say one thing. I, yeah, I, I'm in agreement in, in the sense that I don't, we don't have anything that we can rule on here that's complete. So if we had another opportunity that something that was complete that actually checked out that the square footage was correct, that the um, overhang was, was now pulled, pulled back, um, you know, all of the things to actually meet without any conditions for staff, that we have a clean, a clean record, a clean slate, then that's that's doable. But right now it's not, it, the way that right. it sits. Yeah. And the only other question I had was for, with regards to lighting. I know, um, you know, like I was looking, for example, a lot, you know, a lot of times lighting will go, if there's an overhang like this, they'll actually put you Under, know, lighting. Yeah. This doesn't have any lighting on it, I get that. But, but yeah. one of the conditions, I think it was 41, yeah. if I'm mistaken, and it just basically, it, it kind of leaves it up to whatever, I guess, our, our our code is for minimum for minimum lighting. I, I think yeah. uh, based on was it forty one? Wait, uh, no, it was. I'm sorry, uh, thirty two. Thirty two. That the applicant shall provide adequate exterior lighting for each residential unit that maintains performance standard as described in 
the, the code chapter 8.48. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's basically, it sounds like going to be decided a- after the fact. Yeah. Or w- at okay. staff level. Yeah. Usually okay. uh, they do t- uh, all kinds of calculations anyway. After when they make the, the electrical plan, they make calculations at that point for how bright okay. it needs to be and things like that and how many lights there needs to be what the uh, power uh, draw of those lights are mm-hmm. and so forth. And they, th- we also, you know, for instance, uh, on the plan check, I say that they have to have an illuminated address yeah, I saw that. at each place and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so those are the kinds of things we check when we go for the final plans. So, yeah. But I mean, it, w- it of course would be very nice if they were on the plan. Yeah, to show it us would be what it, what the lights look like. So I mean that's yeah. a, a minor thing at this point, but given everything else, it sure would. Because I mean I'm looking at the back of this right, and I'm going. You know, it's a it's a very long flat wall. I don't really see. I- it would be tough to come up with an lighting that's attractive at this point on something like that because, it, I don't know. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but. Uh, I, this doesn't really lend itself to it the way I'm seeing it. You know, a corner light hanging off the roof or something is not, <laughs> is not, not a good look. So, I, you know, I'm not sure, but it would be, that would be, I mean, just as a, a little bit, it'd be nice to see what the idea is for lighting. Mm-hmm. Because what if it comes back and that doesn't meet, it doesn't even come close to meeting the, the, the code. No, it will c- meet the code by the time it, it gets done. the building permit. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, like yeah. I said, that's not the really this the like four or five more times after this. It goes back and forth sure. and back and forth because they have to do a lot of engineering reports and things like that. This, These are really concept drawings. It, uh, I right. tell people oftentimes that uh, it's almost back of napkin drawings is what it is at this point. Okay. But uh, still, you know. You got to know what you're approving. Well, I, th- I think yeah. the the square footage is obviously important. Yeah. Uh, the trash cans is important too. I mean, that's yeah. th- there needs to, there's like that's like tw- a minimum of twelve cans if you think about it. A minimum without the food, that that could be another four more. You could, yeah. have, you could be dealing with sixteen cans that have to go somewhere. Are they going to put yeah. them in their garage? I don't. I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, I would. Well, that's garage, it, and that's another thing I would make a suggestion about when it goes to building permit, but. Uh, it's it's really a decision of the trash company of how many uh, trash cans they have to use and whether they use dumpsters or trash cans. And then when it comes to the building plans, I say, okay, now where are you going to put the trash cans in? Uh, very often they put them on the side of the front building mm-hmm. on the mm-hmm. right side. And th- in that case, they would put a piece of concrete there or something and uh, roll them there and put a gate over okay. there is usually what they do. And in when I when I go to final plan check, I look at it and I go, does this look good from the front uh, the way it is with trash cans over there? Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't look good, I say, please put a a, a fence over Some there. Something. Yeah, something okay. to block the view of it. So Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Uh, not a question, it's basically a comment is uh, Applicant said he's been working for five to six months with staff. Um, we pointed out some deficiencies, and his response was, well, we can correct that, we can correct that. I don't know why it wasn't corrected within the last five or six months. Um, we knew that the one unit was less than 800 square foot, but there's plenty that came before us anyhow. So I'm, I'm going to uh, take the opportunity and, and second uh, push the vote motion. Yeah, if, if, if I could here, um, ordinarily in situations like this where site development permits coming forward or other discretionary approvals are coming forward and the commission wants to deny the project, we would typically come back with a resolution of denial that specifies the basis for that denial. If in this instance it's clear the only basis for denying is the failure to meet the 800 square foot minimum dwelling unit standard and the encroachment into the into the okay. uh, so if we if you if we could specify those things clearly in the motion that's likely enough 
or would be enough that we could move the item this evening because I think that gives the applicant enough information as to the grounds for denial that they would be able to work with that in terms of a potential appeal. Um, and then of course, another consideration would be, uh, it'd be within your purview also to continue the item to allow more time to try to meet uh, the criticisms or the concerns of the Planning Commission that have been expressed. And if that were the case and the will of the Commission, given how many times we have seen this now, I think an appropriate direction to staff would be to come back next time with two alternative recommendations, either approve as revised if, if you feel that your concerns have been addressed or have a detailed resolution of denial basically in the staff packet ready to go if the item falls short on its return. So it's, it's uh, the pleasure of the Planning Commission. I just wanted to lay out some, some possible options for you all. Thanks for that. Um, I'll revise the motion and then we can consider the whatever, you know, whichever direction it goes. So I'll, I'll the making the motion for denial because the uh, because one of the units does not meet the 800 square foot minimum requirement for square footage as well as there's a uh, a approximate three foot it's either two and a half or three foot encroachment into the side yard into the rear side into the rear setback uh, and also that uh, there are multiple discrepancies between the total lengths, total length of the structure, the main structure and the front and the second structure uh, between the total square footage and the sum of the individual uh, measurements that comprise that those structures, albeit small, they're 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 not there. And uh, and also due to the inaccuracy, it's just the, just the inaccuracies of the measurements with respect in, in the rear setback, the, the distances that are on their. There, there are measurements that go to the alley prior to the dedication. So they're using the two and a half feet of the alley as part of a distance from the alley, in this case, to the encroachment. I mean, it's, 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 it's bad enough that they're encroached, but then, to, but then to come up with it still being within a 10-foot setback they got there by utilizing two and a half feet that they can't use because it's dedicated part of the alley. So when you look at it, it says 10 feet, looks, looks fine, but until you start to put the, the math to it. So it, it's, it's these inconsistencies that, you know, that I, that's the basis for my motion for denial. So, um, the commissioner's bold basis for denial include the encroachment of the second story um, balconies into, into the setback? Those balconies are okay, I believe, mm -hmm. because if you read the code, it's, you gotta be, uh, it, you can encroach into that uh, within so many feet of the property line. So the property line is, at that point, is 10 feet away. So they have a five foot balcony on that upstairs they're still five feet away, and I think I believe the number was it was either two feet or three feet. I'm not sure which that you couldn't you couldn't get close. So those balconies are okay, three feet, yeah. and uh, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so are you uh, making a motion for a denial or a continuance to fix those issues? Like what? Like denial, uh, just denial. Uh, as as he had stated. Uh, well, that's where my so if, okay. If we yeah. wanted, that's that's okay. the motion, and then. So, um, just with my two cents, I mean, I uh, rose up for giving someone 
a chance. They've had several chances. But I mean, at this point, I, I, I do actually like what he said in that what we can do is <coughs> we can make a motion for a continuance. So at this point right now, all we've got is the dimensions on this drawing and arts calculations, which are not jiving. So whether his are correct or incorrect, or these are correct or incorrect, I guess we don't really know. Um, what I would like to see in a, if we were to do a continuance is to get something that actually checks out with the proper square footage where the overhang doesn't have to be handled by staff that we can actually see a completed project with the proper square footage that doesn't encroach on um, property lines that isn't using <laughs> the, the alley oh, yeah. as part of it. I yeah. mean, like all of these things have to be met mm -hmm. and it, it's, the unfortunate part is, is because it's been five or six months and because there's so many inconsistencies, it's not, it's not playing well to, to us being in favor of this project because right now it, it doesn't meet what currently we can even approve. So I guess my two cents would be a continuance that states all of those conditions have to be met in a revised plan and if not, then there's a valid, you know, motion actually, or you know, for a denial at right at that time. So it's like, it's here's your last chance. Is is basically where I'm at with it. Okay, so Michael, do we need to vote on the first? Well, do we have a second? We have a motion for denial. Right. I do just, we have I to vote on that? Well, and then. We, we can take the first and the second, then we could do an alternate motion. Right. Okay. If there's a second for the alternate motion, the vote on the alternate motion goes first, then you go back to the original motion. Okay. O or do we have, well, I guess, so you're saying the motion was made, so we have to see if there's a second for that before, before we go any the, further. For the denial. For the denial. Correct. Yeah. I did make a second. Yeah. Okay. So it is seconded. Do we have an alternate motion? I I would like to make an alternate motion to continue it to the next meeting with revised drawings that meet all of the requirements for square footage setbacks. Um, and then if they trash. do not, and trash, and if they do not meet that, uh, then it would be, uh, uh, would you say it was a- Have the motion prepared for denial. Yeah, for a denial. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Or just a quick discussion on that. Just, just yeah. a question that I have on that. Okay. Who does the verification on that? Who, uh, you know, I, I just started through this because one item just mm -hmm. didn't add up. And yeah. So then I, my curiosity gets the better of me. And then, well now, let's see this square. And so I did the square footage, okay? How do we normally handle that? Now I know, uh, yeah, is, is, this a, is this something that should be, for it. you know, yeah. uh, I know engineers have to put a stamp on documents and their license is on the line. Mm -hmm. If yeah. there's inaccurate. I would is think this an, an architect? architect would have to too. I, I see yeah, designs and drafting. I don't know if Umberto Corona mm -hmm. is an architect. If he is, he's got a license. He can mm -hmm. stamp it. And, and, and then do, do you guys check it then at that point? Yeah, we do yeah. still. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's like, I mean, if we approve this the way this sits, if we had, haven't made it. How would it get caught? Um, I mean, it, it's yeah. it's uh, you know it's 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 not a, that laborious of a task, but yeah. uh, you have plans that say that there's each yeah. of these square footages are 800, yeah. and I guess, but for me putting a pencil to it, we would all be trusting this. Yeah, misplaced. Okay, and that's the part that bothers me. I mean, it's like, why am I yeah. doing this? I mean, well, I, you know, from I don't mind doing it, one, believe me. I, but, I, but, I, but I just. Oh, sorry. I'm, I should ask. Well, I, no, no, but that's, that's, so that's the question. That's, I'll shut up. Yeah. Answer. So, um, 
when I saw the cantilever, all that other stuff, I went, well, that's not going to happen anyway with the cantilever. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, all the other stuff, uh, like the fact that he didn't change the, the calculations of the fourth unit on the, on the front page or whatever, uh, uh, that's nil at this point once I've pointed out that the cantilever is there. We don't know what it's going to be anyway, so it doesn't matter whether that's right or wrong as far as I'm concerned because I, it will be fixed when they get rid of the cantilever at that point. So the other measurements and stuff like that, I'm like, whatever at this point because it's wrong anyway. So I guess for us, but I and it is see, just I a just few inches see. off here. And there. Yeah, I, and I don't think it's minor things yeah. that are, you know, we're questioning here. I mean, I can't approve it the way it is. There's just too many questions. Okay, so now we have, so we, have so we vote on the second motion first, which would be to continue it for a month and have a motion for denial ready at the next meeting. Correct. Okay. David. All those in favor, will you motion, you didn't make a motion, I make my a second. Motion. You say and so. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Opposed. Okay, now we'll go back to the first motion, which was a motion okay. for denial. No vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion of denial? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. So this way seven yeah. commissioners becomes a yeah. good Right. <laughs> <laughs> So where does mm, where does that leave us? So my belief is staff's recommendation was for approval. Mm -hmm. uh, no votes were present to carry that approval. So without approval, you have inaction, which effectively is a denial it's of denial. the project. Okay. Okay. So that's where it is. Okay. So I, if I could, one moment, please, before we close that sure. out. Sure. Just for the record, uh, for the sake of procedure, I should note that, again, this is technically a denial of the project by the Planning Commission based on how the vote was carried out. Um, the applicant does have a right to appeal that decision pursuant to the Los Alamitos Municipal Code. Um, it's guided by section 17.60.020, and that appeal must be filed in writing within 10 calendar days of the rendering of the decision, which was this evening. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, do we have any items from the Development Services no, Director? Yes. Oh, we got to get Wendy back. Finishing up that last puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a puzzle back there? She got a little book. Oh, did little she? Puzzle yeah. Book. Oh. <laughs> Okay, now do we have any items from the Development Services Department? We do, but um, did we skip over the staff report? No, that was important. Was there another staff report? Vice Chair, members of the commission, I want to thank you for uh, for tonight and for being flexible on uh, rescheduling our regular meeting to a special meeting. So I do have a few um, updates that I'd like to provide. In front of you, you received the water bottles um, with gift cards, so please make sure you walk away with those and not leave them behind. Um, well, Gabby, we'll just grab a Chris Elmer and Charlo. 
Uh, just a, a note that City Hall will be closed during the holidays, um, starting on Thursday, December 21st. Make sure I get this right. Thursday, December 21st, and then ultimately coming back Tuesday, January 2nd. And Are you closed on Thursday? Or open on Thursday? It'll be closed yeah, on Thursday, back. December yeah. 21st. Oh. Wow. Yeah, it's just the way that the holiday we felt. We should work for the city. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Thursday, de December 21st, we're closed through Monday, January 1st, coming back Tuesday, January 2nd. Wow. It, it's nice. The, the way that the holiday fell, Christmas Eve and the MOU, it goes back to the Thursday. So that's ultimately why. So we nobody's just working. tell our employer that we do work so with for the city and <laughs> get the same time off that they do. <laughs> with the caveat that police services will still be... Um, present and then some members of our team will be working just the city hall offices will be closed to the public and we will have our um, typically we leave a, a general greeting message for anyone that calls in um, similarly if someone were to stop by there's in information that can be provided to them if they wanted to be in contact with city staff there's a service line that we can um, share so not totally closed but yes closed um, along those lines um, just something to note, we will be doing some termite tent um, treatment um, during the holidays for three days. Uh, that would be Tuesday, December 26th through Thursday, December 28th. So if you happen to see that City Hall is enclosed with a tent, we're not completely <laughs> giving the impression that we're just completely closed, but it's just um, treatment for the termites that we're having um, during those three days. So kind of worked out in that, in that sense. Um, at the last City Council meeting, uh, we actually, two city council meetings ago, we uh, received the council's blessing to proceed with the Revival of Salamitos program that's intended for local businesses to basically apply for a grant that's gonna offset some expenditures. So I believe I provided an update at the last uh, planning commission meeting, but just uh, a note that that program will launch in February of 2024. So if you happen to have friends or, or know specifically businesses that might be interested, please send them the information to our office and we'll be happy to share more of the details, but more information will be coming in the coming weeks as to what the application criteria will be and how folks can learn more about that program. Um, another program we're conducting a survey uh, for the neighborhood um, parking permit and street sweeping survey that's being conducted throughout the community. It's just a reminder that if you haven't participated, um, that window will close in mid-January. And then we have a workshop taking place next Tuesday at 6.30 um, where anybody, members of the community, public, if they're interested in learning more about what the survey involves or why we're doing it, just a general uh, informational meeting that'll take place next Tuesday at 6.30 at the community center. Um, so you're invited to attend or members of the community that are interested in learning about the survey. They can even participate in the survey on, on that, that night. Um, another noteworthy item that I'd like to share is um, the city of Los Alamos was uh, nominated for what's con considered a red carpet award ceremony, and that's for the Los Al Bucks program that was uh, conducted two years consecutively. So it's an economic development um, awards night that's recognizing different municipalities for different programs that they offer, and luckily the city of Los Alamos was nominated, and that's taking place tomorrow evening. Um, so members of staff and, and city council will be in attendance, and hopefully we receive some good news from that. Um, Another item, um, so just to note that uh, the minutes will be conducted through DocuSign next uh, month. So the chair of the commission will not be signing um, by hand any longer, We're trying to go green, and so that'll be conducted through DocuSign. A lot of our contracts, a lot of our uh, city uh, documents are being done that way, so now we're just evolving to other ways that we'll be doing that, so just FYI. And that'll be sent through the city email, which uh, brings me, um, to remind um, our commission that we wanna make sure that we have uh, full participation of correspondence through the city email. Um, I understand it's not often that you may look at that for just general correspondence, but through the city, if there's any special note communication that takes place, it'll be through, uh, through the city uh, designated email. So if you can please just habitually just check throughout the week, you might you know have information that you wanna be privy to. So that's just a, a subtle reminder to do that. And then uh, just tentatively, we are aiming in February to conduct a, uh, a dinner for all of our commission. Um, that involves planning, traffic, the Recreation Commission. And it's gonna be as a formal thank you to close out the year. Um, in the past, I wanna say that we've conducted that 
around December on the holidays, but we're aiming to do a little bit more of um, together collaboratively, um, where we will also include maybe new members of the commission, of different commission that will be participating and we'll welcome at that at that time. So more information to come, uh, but tentatively, please just uh, kind of anticipate in February that that'll take place. Um, otherwise, I don't have any more updates and thank you. Okay, do we have any commissioner reports? Nope. Wendy? Yep, no. Everybody have a Thanks. really nice and safe Christmas and New Year's. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this meeting's adjourned.